Hey guys, welcome back to the House of Gordon. So today's episode is a special one in that we're going to look at the top five tips that have taken me from being a novice breeder back in 2013 roughly to where I've got to today we are due to put 70 birds on the perch or 15 pairs. Now when I say a novice back in 2013 that first year uh, off nine pairs in an aviary I only managed to produce three chicks. So you can see there's been a vast improvement in my breeding of Gouldians as my understanding of them has grown and I've developed different techniques and all of that. So we're going to give you the top five tips that I feel have made that biggest difference to me. So tip number one is that I joined a club. Now I know many of you aren't keen on joining a club and that's fine. But the reason I say that was important to me was the fact that I could then get the right advice from the right people. Typically on social media, when you pose a question, you'll get 20 or 30 different answers um, and you don't know who to believe and who not to because you don't know who actually knows what they're talking about in terms of, for example, medicines. Whereas in a club, you're getting to know individuals and you soon get to realize through talking to the different um, people in the club who's good at medicines and who's good at, I don't know, other, other aspects maybe soft food or sprouting or whatever it might be. So that made a huge difference and I would encourage you to consider it on that basis. Tip number two is more sort of a, uh, now getting into the nuts and bolts of the whole thing. And it all comes down to austerity on tip number two. Now, I was told when I joined the club that austerity is important and you'll remember the first season I was still saying that austerity is important and today I still say it's important but the method that I use for austerity has changed and let me explain. So in season one of the show I would drop all canary seed out of the mix, I would drop jack millet out of the mix and all the birds would get for, for the 30 days of austerity period was white millet and red manna. Now, that is great if you've got a huge obesity problem where a lot of your birds are carrying excess weight and you really need to trim them down, then that is the way to go. For me personally, and you've heard me mention that everyone set up in situations a bit different based on, on your methodology, my birds don't really pick up that much fat leading or over the course of the year. And as a result, that austerity method was too harsh and what I found is that my first clutch of eggs the fertility wasn't great. Clutch number two was fine and clutch and I don't do a clutch number three but on the odd pair that I allowed to do a clutch number three um, they their fertility was much better. So I thought it might be that and as a result I've then started where I kept the seed as a full seed diet so with canary and jack millet but I only reduced soft food for the austerity period. And as a result, I've had great fertility from clutch number one. Okay, so austerity is still very, very important because if your birds are obese or, um, or, or basically they're carrying too much weight, that we know affects fertility negatively because the hen doesn't, um, or the male doesn't copulate properly with the hen. So in all species, we know that obesity is a bad thing. So austerity plays a key role, but you also don't want to take it to the other extreme where you actually degrading the bird to a point where they're taking too long to come back to full condition where they're able to then um, conceive properly and, and mate properly and that kind of thing and actually uh, produce fertile eggs. All right, so austerity is tip number two. And that you want to do it, it's very, very important, but you need to do it to the extent that your birds require. Don't overdo it, in other words. All right, so that's tip two. Tip three is, and we spoke about this in the previous episode, I've reduced the number of nest inspections I do by rather observing the birds and looking for behavior. And as a result, I've had very few birds being abandoned. And I put that down to disturbing them less. Trust me, if you keep fiddling with the nest boxes, sooner or later you're going to have heartache because your, your parent birds will abandon that nest. All right, so that's tip number three, is reduce nest inspections. Tip number four, and now we're starting to get into the sort of big difference items, 
and that is I stopped feeding soft food during incubation. Now, a lot of guys are going to say, oh, no, no, how can you do that? What's the benefit? Try it. What are one of the things that Gouldian breeders tend to moan about a lot? They can get them to lay, they can get them to hatch those chicks, but all too often, the chicks are then tossed out by the cockbird that is overly stimulated with hormones because, quite frankly, we overstimulating them with diet. We're giving them such great soft food in terms of the greens and all the rest of it that we're overdoing it. And as a result, the cockbird, when those chicks hatch, all he's thinking about is breeding a second time. And as a result, he chucks the babies so that he can then start mating again with the hen. What I now do, and this has worked, when the hen starts to incubate, on day one of incubation in other words, I stop all soft food, they only get their seed. So I'm not going to give them soft food anymore until day 14. The day those chicks are due to hatch, I start feeding soft food again. The parents use it, they feed it to the chicks. I then carry on with that until they go down for the second clutch. Once they start incubating on the second clutch, I'll cut the egg food again, so no proteins, and the same thing will happen. The cock bird will settle, and when the chicks hatch on day 14, he's not overstimulated, and as a result, I don't have a, a chick tossing issue. Out of the 70 birds, I've, or uh, 15 pairs that I've bred, the 70 birds that I'm putting on the perch this year, I've only had a single chick that was thrown out. I don't think it was thrown out because of the fact that the, the male was, was overstimulated and chucked it out for that reason. I think what happened is that little chick was very weak and died in the nest and was chucked out because of that, not because of the cock, because the rest of the clutch were left alone. They weren't thrown out of the nest. So in other words, out of all the 70 odd that I've bred this season, I've only had to pick up a single chick and throw that single chick away. All right, so that's tip number four, and that's a big one, guys. Talk to any of the breeders on social media, and you'll see they're having a problem with chick tossing, and I'll put it down to tip number four and tip five. Now, what is tip five? This is, we've saved the best for last, quite frankly, and tip five is simply this, and we've spoken about it actually before, and that is, I do not breed first years anymore. If I breed a bird in 2024, I'm not going to use that bird in 2025 for breeding. I'm going to use it on my show team. 2026 is the first time I'm going to breed that bird. Now, if you really stuck, and you might have it where you've got a cock bird that is a two, three-year-old, but you're missing a hen for him because the hen died and you're therefore needing a youngster. That is not so bad because at least you've got one mature parent that knows what they're doing in terms of feeding. But the moment you put the two together, remember the statistics that we found from season one, 17% success rate only on first year breeders when both the hen and the cock were first years. Compared to 70% success rate on mature pets. So that is tip number five is don't read first year birds. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Thank you once again to all those that subscribed and got us to the 2000 mark. If you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, please do so that we can continue to grow. And finally, if you've enjoyed today's top five uh, tips, please like it so that I know that we should be doing more of these types of, of videos. Have a wonderful day and we'll see you in the next episode.